Advertising. It's the second oldest profession. And anyone in advertising with any sense of perspective stress drinks like Freddie Rumson these days. Because as much as advertising's up in your face, and as much as you complain about that, you don't realize the truth. You don't realize you're kicking advertising's ass like never before. And why would you do that, you big meanie? Advertising is about happiness. Don't you like happiness? Sure, it's also about a direct assault on every human being possible. It always has been. Outdoor ads for runaway slaves in ancient Egypt. Campaign ad graffiti at Pompeii. Chinese people using bamboo flutes to sell candy 3,000 years ago. They all operate on the same basic pitches advertisers use today. Using either a hard or soft sell, McLaughlining you right in the heartstrings and appealing to the same two forward-looking emotions, fear and hope, that have driven dramatic storytelling since before Bill Shakespeare. So is my nine thrall to thy shape. And you know ad men put product every place they can. One of them put product in front of you before you saw this, but you may not know the internet you're using right now is stalking you with Pete Campbellian creepitude. One Atlantic writer measured that, and in a 36-hour period, his movements were tracked by 105 different ad companies. And he's a web-savvy Ginsburg type. The trashy lyrics and browser game websites Joe at AOL.com wanders into probably invites so much illicit tracking, somebody in Russia can guess his fingerprint, hat size, and favorite tattoo song. Which is all of them. Yes, advertising's as American as apple pie, or baseball, or endless proxy war, which describes the advertising process perfectly. Because this is a two-sided conflict, and every time you face a banner ad for a browser game starring chesty medieval pinups, that's a sign you, my lord, are driving every ad man in existence to drink. More ice! You've consumed so much advertising already, new ads have to entertain you as well as content does to move the needle. That's why the Super Bowl's commercial breaks are now auditions for a nightmarish Flavor Dust SNL. And that advertiser struggle isn't new. By the time real life Don Draper finished busting a whiskey addled nut in excitement about Think Small or It's Toasted, the viewing public consumed that ad, got bored of that ad, and left Don working another long ass the suitcase night, trying to make a 30 second piece of content that's cooler than the Twilight Zone and funnier than Dick Van Dyke, even though it has to star shampoo bottles. Over time, that cycle got quicker. Then the internet kicked it up to fuck you DSL speed, so every occasional actually clever idea got oversaturated and imitated, so the company realized they spent millions promoting funny deodorant stud, but can't hold on to those fans because they didn't do the even harder alchemy of leveraging meme into money. Maybe they even wasted a huge social media opportunity and only put out 23 tweets during that entire campaign, a tweet quote of any of those execs' own kids' crushes in a lunch period. The ultimate iteration of ad originality his death race comes from the dawn of the internet. The very first banner ad came out in 1994 and had a click-through rate or CTR of 44%. It was new, it was exciting, it was as sexy as that Mad Men lady who they throw in Mad Men's commercials too because hot damn lip bite wolf whistle jaw drop. But today that CTR number on banner ads is 007, as in 0.07%. And remember, that's in spite of a hundred company Legion of Doom monitoring our browsing habits and serving up ads to fit them. Today the one sexy banner ad isn't even old lady hot anymore, and I say that with the utmost respect for Miss Blankenship. Because if an ad's not delivering happiness through pretty girls or fresh ideas or shiny new tech, you skip it like a fourth grader in the 90s, and you have more ways to skip it than ever before. If you can afford cable, you can afford DVR, TV's lovely f you to what's left of the world's Ogilvy's. Or you can cut that cord and get the only shows you ever watch anyhow ad-free. Or just pirate TV and movies, right? No ads there, except for some porn and MacKeeper pop-ups, which are too smutty and deep web to keep any legitimate ad exec in Cobb salads. Even if you obey the man and watch ads, the system measuring you is buggy as hell. The method depends on a tiny viewing sample measured by outmoded people meters. Everyone agrees it doesn't work, and it's only still a thing because there's money in pretending this is 1955. And are you a human being? Which is to say, do you like song? Well, ad-supported music is either too antique to survive or has to price itself so cheaply it's going out of business, even though it's exploiting its artists with cybernetic abandon. Or if you listen to podcasts, Apple owns 89% of that market and their app's skip 15 seconds button kills any ad from any of the only four companies that sponsor all podcasting for some reason. Plus, print is dead or dying, billboards kill property values, and their marketing impact is fuzzy. Mobile ads are the pop upiest pop pop-ups in the history of, I don't want to say pop-ups again, but pop-ups, if you go in the opposite direction with something beyond subtle like product placement. It'll put your product in front of people, but is there any call to action? Or does the viewer see it and think, yes, products exist. Even the newest ad trick is already obsolete. It's native advertising, which can totally bring your reader to a sponsor's product, like one time. And from then on, those readers know you trick them and will get their content elsewhere. Unless they never cared about content quality in the first place, because if people want bad content, great content, or Schmidtman brand baloney, they will get it. They've always been able to, and they have more options than ever before. That means the viewing audience keeps scurrying into tinier and tinier niches, splintering marketer reach and letting fans enjoy few or zero ads as they have their fun and their tasty Schmidtman brand baloney. 
those ads do reach the viewer, they don't leave a real impression. They can't disguise their crassness. They lack the smooth, moist tang of Schmittman brand below. Okay, okay, this is, this is not a branded video anymore. I, I don't want to pimp it and I own the company. Okay, did you, did you know we, did you know we can't call it a meat? Or a solid? Look, viewer, listen, listener, the world's changed. And you won! There's more ads on more platforms than ever, yet they just slide off you like you're made of Teflon, a product no one knows how to sell you anymore. So next time Budweiser Snapchats you an Instapin, remember it just shows they're desperate, you're a genius, and that you've probably even got the smarts to run your own business if you... Yeah. Yeah, well, it already, it already says it's a quasi-meat on the package, so. No, no, they can't, they can't make us change, they can't make us change the packaging. They can't, we, we printed a, a shit ton of that. We can't. I did not get into the bologna business to sell bologna -ish. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Uh, I hope you share this with your friends and they share it with their friends and so on and so on. And we get a real virus of a content going. So please subscribe. And then click the like button if that's there or your current platform and time period's equivalent of a like button. It's a thumb up or like an A-OK -okay or just the word yes. Click that. And then in the comments, just let us know what you did today. However mundane, I promise you at least a person will be mildly interested.